Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to create cute Easter egg lanterns made entirely out of paper and an LED light. I'm always surprised at the amazing things that we can make with just paper, and lanterns are one of them. Like these adorable egg lanterns. Aren't they so fun? You all loved our easy no glue pumpkin and Christmas tree lanterns, and we had a blast designing a whole new set of them just for spring. And fun story, so my daughter and I were at the University of Michigan Children's Hospital a couple of months ago, and we saw our Christmas tree lantern on the reception desk. I was so excited to see it out there in the wild like that, and I started taking photos of it. I might have embarrassed my daughter, but that's when I learned that a child's parent had made the lantern and shared it to brighten up the waiting room. And not only that, but the receptionist told me that that parent had also made the pumpkin as well, that pumpkin. How cool is that? I would be so tickled to walk in there and see the Easter egg lantern brightening up everyone's day as well, hint, hint. <laughs> and the good news is that these Easter eggs come together really easily with nothing but some cardstock and an LED light, plus some optional vellum or something else to diffuse it like parchment paper or even copy paper if you have it on hand, as well as something to cut it with. Now you can use my PDF files to cut the designs out by hand using a pair of scissors or a craft knife, but I'll demonstrate how to do it with a cutting machine in this video. I will use a cutting machine like the Cricut Maker 3 today in this video. You could also use an original Maker, an Explorer series machine, a Cricut Venture, a Cricut Joy Extra, or even the Cricut Joy. See, we have a Cricut Joy version right here, or another machine that uses SVG or DXF cut files. I've got a full list of the tools and supplies, plus links on where to find them in my materials list. It's on my blog at jennifermaker.com 592. That's where you'll find written instructions with helpful photos and tips as well. And if you want to make your own custom Easter egg lantern like this one with your own design, a cute little saying, or even personalized with someone's name, stay tuned to the last step for more details. So let's start off with the free files for these lanterns, and then I'll show you how they all go together. Step one, get my 3D Easter egg lantern designs. First, download my lantern designs at jennifermaker.com 592. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 592 and click the link to download the designs. If you're not sure how to use these files, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to download and unzip SVG files. There are five designs in the folder. A cute bunny with Easter eggs, a lovely butterfly design, fluffy dandelions, fun springtime daisies, and a pretty hyacinth design. There are score versions that you can use with a scoring tool like a scoring stylus or a single scoring wheel, or no score versions that use dashed cut lines to make the creases instead. There's also a folder of the same designs, but sized to fit the Cricut Joy. If you're curious about customizing the designs for this shadow box or want the template, the blank template, to create your own awesome masterpiece, stay tuned to the last step for more details on how you can do that. In this video, I'll show you how to use a Cricut cutting machine to cut the pieces so they are precise. If you cut these by hand instead, just skip to step three. Step two, prepare your design. Let's start by adding the design to Cricut Design Space. Click the Upload button and then Upload Image. Click Browse and find the Bunny SVG file with no score in the file name. I'll demonstrate with this version so I can show you how to create creases without a scoring tool. If you have a scoring tool, you can use the design with score in the file name instead and use your scoring wheel or your scoring stylus to create the creases. I have the steps to adjust score layers over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Scoring. Once you've selected the best design for you, click Upload and then select the new design under Recent Uploads and click Add to Canvas. With the design selected, click the Ungroup icon. 
I recommend always ungrouping a design after you upload it, as it will be grouped by default. If you'd like to leave out the optional bunny ears piece or the diffuser panels, just hold down the shift key on your keyboard to select them and delete them. I like to use them though, so I'm going to keep them where they are. And that's all we need to do. Your lantern is now ready to cut. Make sure the correct machine is selected in the top right and click make. On the prepare screen, make sure the correct material size is selected for each of your mats. My cardstock is 12 by 12 inches, so these mats are good. But my diffuser panel material is 8.5 by 11 inches, so I'll go ahead and change the first mat's material size to match that. The other diffuser mat automatically adjusts. Since the pieces on both mats are the same color, Cricut Design Space knows they'll be cut from the same material. We're almost ready to cut, but I think we can combine some of these mats to save time and materials. See how there's extra room on this mat? I think our egg's base pieces will fit nicely there. To move them, click the three dots and select Move Object. Select the mat you'd like to move them to and then click Confirm. Make sure they don't overlap with the other pieces on the mat. Now we've reduced the cardstock mats from four to three. You'll still see the empty mat, but don't worry, it'll disappear when we go to the next screen. So click back on the first mat and then click continue. Now let's set our mat's base materials. My first mat contains some of my diffuser panels, so I'll click browse all materials and search for vellum. Then I'll click done. Now click the drop down and select more pressure for the cleanest cut. If you're using another material for your diffuser panels, such as parchment paper, you'll want to search for and use the parchment paper setting. If you're using copy paper, search for copy paper and use that setting. I'm using vellum though, so I'll stick with the vellum setting. And since my next mat is vellum 2, I'll check the box next to remember material settings to apply the same settings there. Just remember to change it again once you get to your cardstock mats. Now place your first mat's material face up on a machine mat. Since I'm cutting vellum, I'll use a blue light grip machine mat. Align the top left corner of the material with the top left corner of the mat's grid just like this. And use a brayer to make sure it's fully and evenly adhered on the mat. And then with a clean premium fine point blade in the clamp, press the flashing load and unload button to load the mat into your Cricut. Then press the flash and go button to begin cutting. When it's finished cutting, unload the mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and roll it back to release the vellum. Continue on cutting your other diffuser mat or mats if you have them. When you get to your cardstock mats, remember to change your material settings. If you're using an LED tea light or fairy lights, 65 or 80 pound cardstock will work great for your egg lantern. But if you're using a heavier LED puck light, I recommend using heavier material such as 100 pound cardstock, which can support the weight of the light better. I'll use 65 pound cardstock and an LED tea light, so I'll click browse all materials and search for medium cardstock. This setting is designed to be used with 80 pound cardstock, but I find it gives cleaner cuts than the light cardstock setting. So select it and click done. I'll select more pressure too to help even more with those intricate cuts. And I'll check the remember material settings box to apply this setting to the rest of my mats. Using a green standard grip machine mat, load and cut your cardstock materials. When removing your cut pieces, use the spatula to help lift delicate parts and use your weeding tool to poke out any stubborn bits of cardstock that may have been left behind. As you remove the pieces from your mats, lay them face up on your work surface to keep them all organized. After you remove the cut pieces, you can use a scraper tool to remove the small bits left on your mat. And when everything is cut, you'll have three large cardstock frame pieces, six panel pieces, a large circular bottom base piece, a smaller circular top base piece, and a set of bunny ears. If you cut them, of course. If you cut diffuser pieces, you'll have six of those too. Step three, assemble your 3D Easter egg lantern. First, find the large frame piece that has two notches at the top and two more at the bottom. Then grab one of the other frames. It doesn't matter which one because they're all identical to one another. 
Take the first frame and then slot the second one into it, first at the top and then at the bottom. Curve the cardstock to make them fit together. Press the two layers flat on your work surface, then grab the last frame piece and slot it into the other two. Once the three pieces are assembled, separate the layers so they take on a three-dimensional egg shape. Now find the large bottom base piece with a circular cutout in the center. Insert the base piece into the middle of the egg frame. Align the basis notches with the notches on the bottom of the frame. Insert them in order, one at a time. This will make it easier than going out of order. You'll need to bend the cardstock, so be careful not to tear it. Insert the top base piece the same way into the top part of the egg frame. Slowly bend the base up into the slots, being gentle with the paper so it doesn't rip. Remember, take your time and go in order to make it a little easier. Now grab the panels and lay them face up so the designs are all in the same direction. For the bunny panels, the sun should be in the top right corner. Each panel has tabs with crease lines at the top and bottom. Fold all the tabs down in the same direction. If you cut the diffuser panels, lay one against the back side of one of the panels, making sure the longer tab is at the top. The diffuser tabs will fit snugly inside the folded panel tabs, so you don't need any glue to hold them in place. Add the diffusers to the other panels the same way. Slide the panel's large bottom tab with its two small outer tabs folded inward and the diffusers tab pinched inside into a slot on the bottom egg base. You could encourage your cardstock panel to curve more naturally by gently wrapping it around something cylindrical, like a roll of vinyl, before inserting it into the lantern base. Unfold the small outer tabs to lock the bottom of the panel into place. Now slide the panel's top tab into the corresponding slot on the top base piece. Just like with the bottom tab, keep the two small outer tabs and the diffuser tab pinched together while inserting them through the slot. Now unfold the small outer tabs to lock the top of the panel into place. If you used a diffuser piece, fold it over against the top base piece. Then use your fingernail to crease it at the fold. This will help keep it from sliding out of the slot. Now you can either push the tab down against the diffuser layer like this, or use your fingers or a thin cylindrical object like a pen to gently curve the cardstock to follow the shape of the egg. Now let's add the other panels the same way because the egg is a little off balance before all the panels are in. I found it easiest to insert the second panel opposite the first, then the fourth panel opposite the third, and so on to maintain the balance of the lantern. But leave one panel off for now. Test your LED light to make sure it's working, and if you have a remote, make sure it responds to your remote too. Now insert the LED light into the egg through the missing panel, centering it inside. If you're using LED fairy lights, insert the battery pack into the lantern first, then out through a bottom opening. Then insert the fairy lights. Now you can insert the last panel. Don't forget to curve its top tab if you did that with the others too. If you cut the optional bunny ears, decide where the front of your egg lantern is, then position the ears so they're facing out from the front. Now simply slide the slot at the base of the bunny ears down onto the edge of the frame to attach them. Step 4. Show it off. Your 3D egg lantern is finished. Use the remote or the switch on the battery pack to control the LED light inside. To replace the batteries on your lights later, fold the small outer flaps on one panel's top inward. Then slide the panel and its diffuser piece down and out the slot. Once the batteries are replaced, put the light back inside the lantern and insert the panel's tab back into the top slot. And then unfold the flaps again to lock it into place. Step 5. Customize it. If you love this Easter egg lantern but wish you could customize one with your own panel design or your name or whatever you can imagine, I have a way that you can do that. You can get the custom blank template and a design toolkit that I made just for this and learn how to create your own custom egg lantern through a special program I have called Advance with Jennifer Maker. 
The advanced program helps to advance your crafting skills by teaching you how to make these popular designs unique and special through tutorials and templates, as well as give you advanced access to my vast library of designs, projects, and resources. Now, I may or may not be accepting new members into the advanced program at the time you see this, but if you're interested in learning more, go to jennifermaker.com slash advance to get all the details and see how it works. I just love how these come together so quickly and easily with no messy glue to deal with. Yes, I know I have glue sitting on the table. That's because it's optional if you want to use it. <laughs> these are truly my favorite types of craft projects, creating something beautiful and detailed with only a few craft supplies and tools. These Easter eggs make beautiful additions to your dinner table, will look great on your desk at work, or would serve as a cute nightlight to welcome in spring. And remember, there's four more designs in the collection for you. The butterfly, daisy, dandelion, and hyacinth designs use the same steps as the others. And there are some reference photos in the tutorial on my blog post at jennifermaker.com slash 592 if you need them. And if you want to learn how to customize your own Easter egg lantern even further with a fun toolkit of elements and your own custom text, go to jennifermaker.com slash advance to learn more about the advanced program. If you have any questions about working with cardstock, using your cutting machine, or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. Just leave your question below this video or come ask in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We love it when you show your photos with us too, and I'm really looking forward to seeing our group filled with your Easter egg lanterns. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.